Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Selenium with CSharp.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about working with Locator, and this is going to be part three of this particular topic. So we have been talking about working with Locator in part one and part two. We have discussed quite a lot of details, and in this lecture, we are going to be just continuing what we left in our last lecture. So if you remember in our last lecture, we were actually trying to perform a click operation by finding the control login link and also performing a send key operation for the username. And we're going to do the exact same thing this time for the password and clicking the login button over here. So how do we actually do all these operations? So I'm going to do the exact same thing, right? So I'm going to just copy the code, paste it over here, and I'm going to just change it to password. So it's going to be txt password. And you remember we were using the camel case coding standard. So we need to use the password over here. So it's going to be password as the name. I know the name because I have developed this app. So I can go ahead and inspect. I'm going to show you how the ID and names are. It is ID as password, name as password as well. Guess what? I'm going to change it to ID this time instead of name because we have already used name for the username. And I'm going to say txt password as the password over here. So this is how we identify and perform an entry of the operation over there. So that is going to be seven and this is going to be eight. And finally, we need to perform a click operation in the login button. But there is a change this time and I'm going to tell you what change this time it is. You can see that this input tag is basically of a type submit, which means you don't really have to click the button there, but you need to call a method which is specifically available while you submit a form type, because as you can see, this whole stuff over here is basically a form, form dot horizontal like this. So this is a form really. So if you want to submit a form in any of your page, which you will be encountering most of the time in the UI, you need to actually use the submit method instead of the click method in Selenium. So I know it's new, it's going to be confusing, but just stay with me. You will understand while we progress along this course. But for now, first of all, you need to identify the login button. And for doing that, it is going to be of a, let's say, go and inspect. It has a value of login and it has a class name of btn btn login. There we go. So now you may be asking like, okay, there is a type of submit, I got it, but how do I identify this control login? Because there is no ID, there is no name, there is no link text, and there is even no text here. So how do I identify this? There is only just a value. And in Selenium, we don't really have any method to identify using value, right? We only have name, link text, ID, CSS class, something like that. So how do I identify Karthik? Can you please tell me that? Well, this is the time I was waiting for you to show you another identifier that we can use in Selenium, which is called as the CSS selector. And this CSS selector is basically going to be using the class name or guess what not even CSS selector we can even use the class name over here and for the class name we can just give the btn or btn default whichever that you like it i think btn btn default itself you can just copy the whole thing and you can paste it over here and it just works fine for you but i'm not really going to do that over here there is also a trick. I mean, you can do it with the code and see if that works or not. Or within the browser, you can see if this is going to work for you or not. So that is something you can use a very, very handy tool, which is developed by my friend Sanjay. And the tool name is called a Selector Hub. So if you are really worked with Selector Hub or if you have not heard Selector Hub, this is the right time for you to understand the selector hub so you can just go ahead and search for selector hub and this one which is going to be very very helpful for you to actually perform the action on the ui you see that it has got 200,000 user and they also are like 4.9 rating which is really fantastic because it, it does quite a lot of operation and this author does quite a lot of amazing stuff 
not only just Netter Hub, it also has got so many things over here, which we'll talk about later. But for now, you can actually use Letter Hub to select the element and see if that works fine for you or not. But for now, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna show you the default option and we'll talk about Letter Hub later while we install it. But for now, you can just go to the console over here. And within the console of the browser, you can actually type dollar dollar to actually work with the CSS selectors. So I was telling you the class name is gonna be a BTN or BTN default. So I can just say dot, so for CSS selector, it always starts with the dot for the class name. And then if you typed BTN, and if you close the parentheses, you will notice that it identifies the input BTN, BTN default automatically. And now if I hit enter, you see that it is showing you a control. So once I hover there, it is highlighting that login there, which means we could effectively identify this control using its class name dot BTN. That's what we'll be doing. We'll be just using the class name as dot BTN to identify the control over here. So this is the new selector that we have not discussed. And this is how you work with CSS selectors in Selenium. And we'll be talking about CSS selector in much detail, like a separate lecture talking about CSS selector and XPath selector. But for now, because we're just getting started with this selector concept itself, I don't want to get you into the rabbit hole of giving more details about this class name and other stuffs about CSS selectors, but just that you got the flavor of how the class names are being identified over here. This particular button is a button type. So I'm gonna say BTN for the button, the short form is BTN in the programming world. And then we're gonna say BTN login because it is gonna be a login type, cool. And now I'm gonna perform a click operation. So the 10th line, I'm gonna say is a click login button. So as I told you, we are not gonna perform a click operation because this button is basically of a submit type over here. So I'm gonna say btn login dot submit. So there is a method called a submit because it is under the form tag. So you can just submit its element using this particular method. So I'm gonna say submit, and I'm gonna submit this particular control using this code. There we go, I have saved it. So now I'm going to run this test and I will show you how this test is going to basically run. I have made an intentional mistake in this particular code, but before I run this, I don't want to show you what problem it is, but let me run this test and I will tell you what problem which I was really talking about. So once I run this test, you will see that the username password is gonna enter successfully, but the login operation is not gonna happen and the test is eventually going to fail. And now you will see that we are seeing the first exception of our test execution that we have did so far. And you will notice that it says that openqa.senium.no such element exception. Believe me, this is one of the exception that you are going to be looking or getting most of the time while you work with Selenium because this is one of the exception that we always encounter because we might have assumed that this is the locator and we might have used it. The locator might be wrong. And that's the reason why I always say, go ahead and work out your locator in the console or using the selector hub tool. That way it actually reduces all these problem. And the second time that you always get this problem is your developer is gonna change the locator in the UI and you are gonna get the same exception. So this is the two places or two times that you're gonna get this particular exception and you will be seeing this exception most of the time. Well, as that said, what is this issue? And as I told you, there is an issue in this particular code. And as you can see, it tells you that this class name that you are trying to select for the CSS selector is unable to locate using the dot BTN. What is wrong? I mean, I'm just using class name. It's not even a CSS selector. Like how is this is happening? Well, if you remember, while I was locating this particular control, I told you that not to identify the CSS class name, you need to use the dollar dollar and the dot is for the class name. And because we already identifying this particular control using the class name, we don't have to give the dot as a prefix. 
So we can get rid of this dot and we can save this whole code. And now if I try to run this test, you will notice that the same code is going to work as expected. So this is the reason why the test has got failed last time. So while you use the class name, you shouldn't be using the dot in the prefix of the particular control. So you see that the code is working fine and the login is happening. And now let's try the same thing because I wanted to show you the CSS letter as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it over here. And I'm going to comment this code, identify the login button using class name. And this time I'm going to go further using CSS selector. So when I say CSS selector, I'm just going to change the method from class name to CSS selector. And now I'm just going to add a dot in the prefix. So this way, we are essentially telling Selenium that, hey, go ahead and identify the UI element using CSS selector. And this is the locator that I identified from my console. So if you just go to the console, you see that dot btn. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. So this operation that you did over here in the console is what you're trying to do in Selenium over here behind the scene. That is what is happening. Cool. So now I'm going to right click and run the test and expect the login to happen this time without any problem. You see that? There we go. And it clicked the login button this time. The test got passed as well. So this is how we can actually work out with the controls in the Selenium in much, much easier fashion. And these are the different identifications that we used to use to perform this operation. The last thing which I wanted to tell you in this particular lecture is how can we reduce the number of lines of code that we have got? It is super big, right? Is there any way that we can reduce it? Well, you can really, but I, I am going to suggest different options in our upcoming videos of this series. But for now, the way that you can reduce the number of line is reduced size method or reduced size code is instead of you really clicking after identification, because this is a straightforward code, you could directly click over here itself while you find the element. So you can basically find and click the login link like this you see that now once you hit the dot here you can get the click get attribute clear display find element and all those operation like even send keys so you can perform a click here so now you may ask like how is this happening well this login link as you can see here the variable is apparently of type iweb element and this find element is also returning an iweb element type so it is much easier that we can actually use dot and a click method right over here so that you don't even have to return like how you did over here. So you don't even have to return a variable because this click method doesn't return you anything. It's a void type as you can see. So this is the reason why you can just perform a click operation. And similarly, you can just get rid of this line and you can just say send keys of admin and you can do this exact same thing for the password and for the click as well so i'm just going to say submit so instead of 10 lines of code that we have seen over here we can reduce it to just six line because we are essentially performing both finding as well as operation in the same line of code as you can see so this is how we can work with locators in Selenium in much, much effective fashion. So far, we have only performed click and send keys operation. I know there are many different operations that we can actually perform. But once we get along this course, I'm going to explain to you all the different controls action that we can perform. But for now, this should give you a much, much higher level details of how you can work with locators in Selenium.